Good morning, everyone. Shavua Tov. Uh, this will be the last class for this week. I'm going to be going to, God willing, I'll be going to the Rebbe, <clears throat> to the Rebbe's headquarters in New York uh, tomorrow early morning. So there won't be any official classes at this time. Well, the classes will resume next Tuesday. Not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday. But, oh, Shalom. Good morning, Shavuot Tov. And this is what I was telling everybody. You can see it on the, I'll put it up. And this week, this week tomorrow, I'm going to be flying to the Rebbe. So there won't be any classes. I don't know exactly how there will be classes. I'm taking my computer with me. <clears throat> so I hope that I will somehow or other put up classes. But what times it will be, I don't know. So I'm putting them up on YouTube. Go to the YouTube every day. And you'll find the classes for that day. I'll put them up in the nighttime. I'll take some of them from last year. And I'll put them up. The ones that are relevant of the Torah or and, and the, the Sikhs of the Rebbe. I already put up two of them for this day for Torah or in this. But let's finish right now, Bati Lagani, because this <clears throat> coming uh, the, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, two days, is going to be Yudshvat, which Yudshvat is a very, very major uh, date in Chabad. It's the day that the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, he passed away, so to speak. And one year later, our Rebbe officially took over. So this is the day that the scepter, so to speak, moved over, but it really didn't. The Rebbe will say that it didn't. It was just another stage, shifting another gear into Mashiach, but it's the same car, it's the same gears, and it's the same. Okay. <clears throat> so we learned this Bati Lagani. Bati Lagani is a Hasidic discourse which was uh, said by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe like in 1923 or something when he assumed the leadership from his father in 1920. <clears throat> but he had it reprinted and distributed for the, to the Hasidim on Yud Shvat 1950, which happened to be the date that he himself passed away. <clears throat> So for our purposes, let's say he didn't know he was going to pass away. That wasn't in the plan that he was going to pass away. But it's nevertheless, that's what happened. And so this is considered to be the final instructions for bringing Mashiach. And the whole idea of bringing Mashiach, of course, is that we're going to work harder. Mashiach will come and he'll make, and the, that we'll be able to really do what the purpose, what we were created for, is in order to serve God and make every moment of our lives eternally <clears throat> meaningful and real. And that's the whole idea of the Holy Temple. So every Jew has to make himself into a Holy Temple. This was begun by <clears throat> actually Moses. Moses, when he brought God's presence, so to speak, back into the world where it was in the beginning when God created it, but Adam, uh, <clears throat> he drove, so to speak, God's presence away. And so it was in the ensuing generations. And afterwards came Abraham. And Abraham re reversed the process. And he brought, began to bring God's presence back into the world. And that culminated, <clears throat> at least the first stage of it, culminated when Moses built the tabernacle on the desert. And since then, he built the tabernacle. We have to make ourselves into a tabernacle, into a holy temple. And the Rebbe points out that the main uh, uh, the main material that this tabernacle was made out of was wood. And it was called shitim wood. I'd say shitim. And the word shitim means craziness. And that's what the Rebbe stresses to us, that that's our purpose, is we're here in this world, because this world is a very crazy place. It, it actually goes against the God who's creating it. <clears throat> the world hides over the God who's creating it. And that's why God made the world. God made it that way. And that's called, and, and the good, the world is that way, but people get, forget about the, the creator and they think only about the creation. That's called also craziness. That's called craziness to the bad side, destructive craziness. And then there's productive craziness, good craziness. And that's what's called craziness of holiness. And then there's what's called normal. A normal Jew, he does what he's supposed to do. He does the commandments, he learns the Torah, he does regular. <clears throat> and that's a very nice thing for himself. But in order <coughs> to fix and to correct the world, that's why we're here, the Takenis Olam, to fix the world up. 
So in order to do it on God's terms, or actually those are the only terms, because otherwise you're not really fixing anything up. In order to do that, as you have to be crazy for God, which means you have to do some things that don't seem that they're really giving you any benefit. For instance, Abraham taking his son Isaac to sacrifice him. What benefit is that? And that's the basis of Judaism, that you do what God wants. God knows what's going on. And we don't. God's creating us, and we're not creating anything. Okay, so there. So the Rebbe went in a whole, a long explanation about what is shtut of klipa, shtut of the bad side. <clears throat> and then in the fourth, which we're going to skip over the fourth paragraph, which is not a nice thing to do, but we're going to do it anyway, because we don't have any time. We'll just go in a short way. The fourth chapter said, we learned the first three. The fourth chapter said, Yimshach, we continued the Ruach Shtut, that this spirit of craziness for the world covers over the emotions and the sense and the feeling of the godly soul. But it does not cover over on the essence of the godly soul. The etzem is kashus, and it does not hide over the essence of the attachment of every Jew to God. Nine. <clears throat> so it's always there, but we have to bring that. That's what happened when Adam ate from the tree. What happened when he ate from the tree? He did not make the world into a bad world. He did not bring man down into perdition and that every man is evil. That's not so. When Adam ate from the tree, he simply covered over the good. And we talked about that before. A person, let's say he, he steals. Everybody in the world knows it's bad to steal. No one likes it if there's, there's someone steals from them. But once you steal once or twice, you get used to it, and then you start wanting to get better at it. You just lose your feeling, your connection, your conscience, your connection to your conscience, but the good is always there. That's a simple example, but every Jew knows and feels <clears throat> and is certain of the oneness of God and that the Torah of God is true and that what God wants is true, unless they're just never educated. But still, it's there, even if, they do, even if they've never been educated to being a Jew. As soon as they know they're a Jew and they know that God gave the Torah, they heard automatically they know and they sense automatically that this is not a lie, it's the truth. And they sense that all the other opinions that say the opposite are yes lies. Okay, so all the lies of the world that people believe and that they get into it and that they want to deny the truth, which is the Torah is true and the Jews are God's people and that God really exists and that God loves everybody, he's creating everybody and that the world is basically good. Anyone who says that, that's what's called shtut of klippa. That's what's called bad. So all the other religions in the world are bad, as far as that goes. I mean, they're good in the sense that they wake up people's conscience. At least they wake up some sort of spirituality. People aren't woke or whatever they call it. So that's some sort of you know benefit. But it's not you know it's in the, it's in the direction of good, <clears throat> but it also can be a big detour from the good. Okay, what's the solution? The whole world is against us. The whole world is crazy. What's the solution? He says the Rebbe Kishem Shatia just like there is <coughs> a deviation or an in inclination, you want to call it a below normal, a destructive one. This is called Stut craziness of klipa of the shells of the covering. Uh, like we said, when Adam ate from the tree, he covered over the good. So we can get into this covering and think that's all there is. That's crazy. Similarly, also there is craziness, which is above normal. This is shtut the kedusha, and this is going to be the shitim wood that the tabernacle is made from. Shitim. It's like this. Omar is all the rabbi say there's a gemur in ketuvot. Omar love Rabbi Yehuda. There was Rabbi Yehuda bar Elish. Oh yeah, notel bad. He used to take a stick of a myrtle, oh, anyway, a branch, something, and he would dance in front of the bride. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yitzchak, he really went overboard. He would dance with three. Shlosh <clears throat> Badim, he would take three sticks. Zorak Echad Kabbalah, he would juggle. Okay, the weddings back then were very, very uh, austere, right? The, 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 the wise men that would come in and they would be very, how do you say, very <clears throat> um, uh, intellectual, academic. Austere is the best word, I think. They would be honorable, really, truly honorable people. 
right? There's such a thing in the world as honorable. I don't know if that exists anymore, but so they would come in and they would add a, an atmosphere of seriousness and importance to the occasion. And they would all stand there once in a while, maybe they would clap their hands to the music a little bit, but the, the, the groom would be happy just that they were there and that they were such important people. They weren't not anybody else. They weren't running around dancing. And so it was also with Shmuel Bar Yitzhak. It seems that he was like the oldest of all of them and the most honorable. And he would take three, all of a sudden he would just take whip out these three sticks and he would juggle, which means he must have practiced a little bit before. And he would dance. Omar Rav Zera, Rav Zera, he was like, like the leader of the generation. Rav Zera said, this old man is embarrassing us. He's disgracing the honor of the, <coughs> of the rabbis. And he's acting foolishness in himself. When he passed away, everybody went to his funeral, right? Could have been that the wise men were maybe a little bit relieved, you know, that, they, that he wasn't going to make fools of them anymore in the weddings. And <clears> there <throat> was his coffin, and there was the rabbis, and between him and the coffin, all of a sudden shot up this big pillar of fire in the shape of one of his sticks that he used to juggle. Omar Rav Zera, Rav Zera turned to his friends and said, looks like we made a mistake. Ahani le shute de kasaba. It looks like God got pleasure from this old man. Shute means what? Three things. Shut ud, it means the stick of hadas, that he would dance with it. Well, some people say shtuti the saba is, is craziness, that he would act like a, a fool. And some people say shituti the saba, that he was, he must have had a policy. He did this every single <clears throat> time, and nobody agreed with him except for God. The shtut said this, <clears throat> and God, but God did agree, and that's the point. The Rebbe wants to tell us, that we have to be like Shmuel Bar Yitzchak, not like Rabbi Zera and all these other great wise men. We have to be crazy. <clears throat> but only at the right time. We'll see. This craziness, Hari Hu, this is above normal. This is a very, very high level. The Ish Vaisha used to, Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yitzchak would only dance at weddings. The Ish Vaisha, because what is a wedding? A man and a woman, Hari Zachu, if they merit, Shekhinah Shroi Beneim. God's presence rests between them. Ish is Ish, Aleph, Shin, and a Yud. Isha is Aleph, Shin, and a He. Ish means fire. Kasher <clears throat> Zachu, if they are <clears throat> meritorious, then Hari Aims, Yudke, it's God's name, Yudke. If not, then it says there's two fires. Right? People get married. There's two fires, and the very beginning is great. You know, they, they, get, they get along together, and they're fiery, you know, they're passionate and everything like that. And then it sort of wears off. But if God is between them, then that never wears off. And it comes in a revealed way. The, the, the love between them never wears off. They know that they're married because God wants them to be. Right? It's, it's a commandment. Uboba Gila comes what says, Binyan Adeyad. It's an eternal... <clears throat> Building, they have children, the children's children, children's children, but even right there at the wedding, you can feel godliness. Im Kain, if so, Hari is at This is a very high level. And the other rabbis, they might have found felt it, but they didn't act accordingly. Lochem Bishvil Zeh, their poor because at the weddings, Zachal Giluim Nalaim, Naalim, there were high, very high revelations. And Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yitzchak, that he acted accordingly. There was a pillar of fire as a result, as a reward, if you want to say that the rabbi saw a reward of this fire. Man and a woman, if they're, 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 there's no godliness between them, then it's two fires. If there is godliness between them, then it's one fire, and it's the fire of God. They're excited and, emo and emotional, not just because of one the other, but because God wants them to be married. And so as a result, <clears throat> the, 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 the marriage is a pillar of fire. It's light. It's life. It's warm. <clears throat> it's connected to God. One pillar, not two. Shezeo, this is Bechina's Gilei, or this is a tremendous revelation of God, really. And so therefore, we have to be crazy. He'd be or in an explanation is like this. 
Tine orin sov, infinite light of God, Hari Lais Machshava Tafisa Be. There's no thought that can grasp him at all. Now, this God is creating us, right? We're being created. So here there's me and you, and we've got eyes, and we have noses, and every human being has these things. If they're you know normal, sometimes a person gets in an accident or is born something what, but a normal person has an eyes and nose and nose, and God is creating everybody exactly in this pattern. <clears throat> so we see that God is very, very, very close to us. He's keeping us alive. On the other hand, <clears throat> we don't have we have no idea what life is. We have no idea what the source of life is. Even the angels, we've talked about this more time. The angels don't know what it is. <clears throat> and we don't know what an angel is. And so God himself, nothing can grasp us. So we have God is keeping us alive, and he's infinitely close to us. And this God that's keeping us alive, we have no idea what it is. We have no idea what life is. And the creator of life, we know. And who is the, according to what is all this being created? According to the Torah. The Torah is the source of the whole business. And so God himself that creates everything, and he's creating everything according to the Torah, and he gives us responsibility. This is above any understanding. If we just say that God is spiritual, he's very high, we can't understand him. Okay, that's, you know, that's God's business. We just, he's so high, he's above. But here we say that God cares about what we do. He gives us commandments. That's really incomprehensible. That makes absolutely no sense. Is he limited or is he not limited? The answer is yes. He's not limited? That's right, he's not limited. Is he limited? Yes. He's limited. So then if he's limited, then he can't be not limited, right? No. He's both. This is totally above even the whole, get, not just understanding. It's above the whole, how do you say, category of understanding. Huh? It's like trying to see sounds. Can't see sounds. Sounds are not in the category of being able to see, of sight. The same thing. Uh, God is not in the category of comprehension, of consciousness. God is not consciousness. God is not the supreme consciousness. That's just one aspect of that. That's God's chokhmah. The call is that any type of understanding, no matter how high it is, nevertheless, it's in the category of understanding. But that which is not even in the category of understanding you can't grasp it with understanding at all. Like it says in the Sefer, in the, in the Tanya, by Hashem, Hashem is There's no thought that can grasp God. It's like saying you want to go into to, to study mathematics in university and you bring a big bag with you. Why are you bring a bag? Because you want to grasp the ideas of mathematics. You bring a bag and then a ladder. A ladder, a really high ladder. You go into the class and you set up the ladder and you have this bag. Okay, teacher, start talking. It's high mathematics. I want to be high and I want to grasp these ideas. So you have a bag. That's, they, they'll, they'll think you're a, you're a fool. right? They won't even hire you for the most, most simple job. And the guy that you don't understand what the, the same thing, the thing you can understand God, it's just your mind is not the proper. It's more, it's more ridiculous to say your mind can grasp God than can say that a bag <clears throat> grasps mathematics. At least a bag and a mathematics, they're part of the creation. And God is the creator. So he says, there's no thought that can grasp it. Everyone is like a fool by God. King David said, like it says, King David said, I'm like an animal and I don't know anything. I'm just like an animal with you. So the King David, the law was always like King David. He was a tremendous genius, King David. Nevertheless, he says, when it comes to the essence of God, I have no idea. I'm not even, <clears throat> that's where the humility comes from. Kolomer, Shabazesh, and Ibar, Babahimus, that which I am like an animal, and I don't understand, just like an animal ma understands mathematics. That's how I understand you, God. And because of that, I'm always with you. God is grasped only by faith. God is only grasped by, how do you say, the, 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 the feeling of our soul. The Bechadeh, in order to under get to God's essence, is by means of Bittel Orotzom. You have to negate your will above understanding. That's the thing we said about Abraham taking Yitzchak to sacrifice him. Totally, totally against understanding, totally against any sort of logic. Abraham was going to wreck all of Judaism, everything that he stood for. There wouldn't be any more Yitzchak. That would, God would have to create another Abraham. <clears throat> okay, God can do it. That, that's, that's God's problem. God tells me to do something, it's going to be for the good, for sure. Okay, and therefore, this is called shtut. This is called craziness. So all the other rabbis they might have understood it, but it didn't activate them. It didn't go above their understanding. 
And Reb Shmuel Bar Yitzhak, he understood it and it went above his understanding. He went crazy at the weddings. He used to dance and, and the bride and the groom enjoyed it. But and this is also what the prophet is called Meshuga. The prophets are called crazy. Like it says, Madua Bar Meshuga Zeh. Why is this crazy person coming? The time of revelation of prophecy, there had to be a, a removal from the physical world. I know of Shatas Asechel Vamidos. A person has to remove himself from his whole personality, all of his understanding, all of his emotions, understanding what's right, what's wrong. To be totally above understanding and logic. But Zeo, that's what it is. Hashaptas al and that's why the prophets used to take off their clothes, like it says with King with King Saul. He removed his garments and he started to prophesize. Why in the world do they have to take off their garments in order to have prophecy? What's one got to do with the other? I thought prophet, prophets were wise people, <clears throat> the, the, the holy people, right? But the normal people, a person doesn't take off his clothes. The prophets used to take off their clothes. Why the lavushin? Because garments, they indicate something. Where do the garments come from? They indicate garments come from the chet etzadat. The garments come from the sin of the tree of knowledge. As I said before, what happened when Adam ate from the tree of knowledge? He covered over the truth. The truth still exists. Truth didn't change. People are still good. The world is still good. But when Adam ate from the tree, he covered it over. That's what's called klippa. That before Adam sinned, it says, it says that both of them were naked. They weren't, they weren't embarrassed. Well, they had nothing to be embarrassed about. They were creations of God, and they did what God wanted. The body is a hate. As soon as they did not do what God wanted, as soon as they sinned, <clears throat> there was a sin of the tree of knowledge. There was garments. What does this mean? What are the garments? <clears throat> the garments were basically what do you feel? Before they sinned with the tree, they felt only God. They felt what they had to do. They knew God was creating them. God was infinitely close. By means of the sin of the tree of knowledge, they decided, they opted out to go according to their own feelings. As high as they were and holy as they were, Adam was God's handwork. But you do, it's known that the main sin of, of the tree of knowledge was the feeling that was mixed from good and bad. Because see, like it says, <coughs> suddenly they knew that they were naked. They knew that they were naked. So suddenly they got a feeling which was mixed good and bad. Good means godliness, and bad means themselves. <clears throat> That's what they say, sitra acha, the other side, means that there's something other than God. What's other than God? Me. That's also the thing of garments. Namely what? A hergish, a feeling, a ma'urav, which is mixed with good and bad. <clears throat> Let's say there's people right nowadays that they say there's no such thing as, as good and bad. Good and bad is, is, right? There's no such thing as truth. Nothing, everything is subjective. Everything is subjective. Okay, if, there's an, if there was ever a self-contradicting statement, it's that one. Why? Uh, nothing, no truth. No, everything is subjective. No truth. That statement you just said, that there's no truth and everything is subjective, is that statement true? Is that statement, or that statement is also false? So if so, then you're wrong. Then there is, right? It's a self contradicting statement. It makes no sense. That's what it means. Everything is mixed up. Good and bad is mixed up. All of a sudden, a person feels, right, to, to kill, kill someone, to steal some. If, it's, if I'm benefiting from it, it's good. If the other guy steals from me or he tries to kill me, then it's bad. Why? Who says? Because I'm God. That's mixed up good and bad. That there is such a thing as good, and I decide what it is. Obeshosho <clears throat> and the source. This is the hergish. This is the feeling of seichel and midos, of intellect and emotions. Okay, and look here. Therefore, the eight and the the time of prophecy, of and they had to take off their garments, because they weren't just taking off their physical garments. They were removing also their intellect, and their emotions, their connection to their own egotism. So they had to be completely open, surrendered all of their powers and all of their senses, like the Maimonides says in the laws of Yesodia Torah, the foundation of the Torah, the, the foundation of the Torah is prophecy. Moses, everything that he said, 
came down from God. He said it was prophecy. God spoke to him. That's prophecy. Miasodia got to know that God also gives prophecy to people. All the prophets, Isaiah and Ezekiel and all those prophets, <clears throat> it's a basic principle, a basis of the Torah, foundation, that God speaks to people. God speaks through people. Hanavua, the prophet, but, but, but who, who is it going to be? Who Anybody who wants to. I, I can be a prophet. I, whatever I say is holy. A prophecy comes on a person that's wise, that he's powerful. What does it mean he's powerful? He overpowers his own, own uh, the, 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 how do you say, his own selfishness. The Ain Yitzro Mizgabar love Bashum Ofen, and his selfishness never overpowers him. Ukumavur, like it's explained, the Rambam explains great length. Look, and therefore, this level is called Shtut. It's called craziness. Why is it crazy? This is pro a prophet. These are the holiest people in Israel. Why is it crazy? Shazil, because it's inclination above normal, and it's above our own feelings. Uliot, because Shavuda b'mishkan, because the service in the holy temple was lakafia chashucha nehora to transform, to 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 control darkness. I'm sorry, lahafcha to transform darkness to light. That the darkness, namely that the darkness itself should be light. How can darkness itself be light? That from our mistakes we learn. And our mistakes push us even more to realize how not to trust ourselves. How to be crazy for God. On the terms of the Torah, there's what's called a normal crazy person. A normal crazy person, the, 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 it's people that they do whatever they want to, and that they're crazy, they're above norm, they don't care what anybody thinks about them, they can take off their clothes in the middle of the street, they can bust things, that, but they, care, they don't care about it. That's called normal crazy. Holy crazy is that you don't think about anything that contradicts the Torah. You're only interested in what God wants. I know Shashtut Lomut said that from the craziness of the world, that enthusiasm you had to do things for yourself, the Bechinah you transform it to being the same level of craziness, enthusiasm for doing what God wants. And therefore, therefore the, the, the tabernacle was from made from shitim from shitim wood. I know, namely that Lamaila Minadat, namely this the, the the holy temple, the tabernacle, was above normal. It was holiness, but where did it come from? It came from regular wood that was refined and made from below normal. It was regular shittim wood, part of the world, and it was transformed to be shittim wood for the holy temple. It means to take the foolishness of being selfish in this world and take that same foolishness and transform it to another type of foolishness, which means foolishness only doing for what God says. <clears throat> I remember the first time I read the, in, in, in the, the Bible in English, that Abraham took his son to sacrifice him, I thought, man, this is not for me. You know, I, I don't, what in the world, does the, do the Jews know this? Do they know about this story? I mean, what has this got to do with anything? I thought religion is, you know, want to go to heaven, you want to be, you know, reach some sort of a levels and be so uh, super, superior consciousness or something like that. Anyway, he's taking his son, it takes him three days. What's the, so the idea is, is when you to do what God wants, and when you do what God wants, then... <clears throat> The world will be a good place. It'll be the way God wants it. That's what it means, make me a holy temple, and I'll do, I will dwell in them inside of each and every one. Zebo by it comes by means of the service of each one of us. Avodas of Birurim by means of refining and clarifying ourselves. Shapol at Kafia, at Hapcha, that we transform darkness to light. We transform our enthusiasm for our egotism to enthusiasm for God. <clears throat> to transform what is below normal. Below normal means serving God in a normal way. To transform them below normal in where in, in the world <clears throat> that it should be from this above normal. The Yeshnam comment the forum. There are many things in the people in the people do. Shuun no heg that he does so because Valazoi tut felt because everybody does it. But the forum elu and these things him kamo chokshe built him No, you don't. Move them, mimakomo for their place. The fishikain na nagas olim because that's what everybody does. Okamok bekami inyan nimus bedoma 
I'll give you a simple example. The Rebbe said that we have to go out in the streets and ask people to put on tefillin. No normal Jew does a thing like that. For sure not. And especially in the, in the yeshiva, taking boys, putting them in the street. That's simply not done. Nobody does it. The, the Rebbe said you have to do it. The Rebbe said you have to talk about Mashiach. It's not a thing. People don't do it. The Rebbe says you have to do it. You do it, it'll help. But people don't do it. You have to take what's normal <clears throat> or what's below normal and make it above normal, a new type of craziness. You take what's normal in the world and you transform it to above normal. For instance, the times of eating, times of sleeping. Usually the feed, the, the world, these things are not moved. The Rebbe, <clears throat> the previous Rebbe, especially was in Europe and Russia, they were very orderly. I guess in America, maybe it's not so much. But in any case, there's times you eat, there's meal time, there's a, and even when you have to do business, nevertheless, these times usually are never moved. <clears throat> you open your store, a store at such a time, you close your store, they're not moved at all. No, that's not so bad. You have an orderly life. Right, you, 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 you never change things. Says Rabbi, oh yeah, you never change things. Zmani could be as a Torah, the time when you set for learning Torah and for praying. Hey, you push them away. If I have time, I'll pray. If I have time, I'll learn Torah. If I have time, I'll do commandments. Sometimes it's pushed away totally. I, I, I don't, I don't pray. I'm sorry, I haven't got any time to put on tefillin. I don't. A person that takes any sort of accounting to him, soul, to his own soul. Is there any sort of logic or, why do you say, wisdom benefit to such a conduct? In other words, you're doing what you want and what you decided is good and what makes you feel good, that 100%. But what God decides you should do and what God wants you to do and what God wants you to feel, that you don't pay any attention to. Says the Rebbe, okay, listen, it would be good if we would live forever. But the mi yodea eitu zmano, our time in this world is very limited. Could it be the Midrash Rabbah, like it says, ain't adam shalit lomar, a person cannot say, when it comes for time for a person to die, he can't say, just wait for a second, I just have to make a, some, set my house in order, it's available beiti. I have to just make my uh, figure out my papers and everything like that and <clears throat> my properties. How can a person put all of his soul? It's got no benefit at all. And on the main thing that he was, the whole reason why he came into the world, he forgets totally. He's interested in what people think about him and he's interested in having a nice car. And those things are okay. But on that, you put your main emphasis. <clears throat> and the reason why you're here in the world, you forget total. Why do people do this? Is because of the feeling, the spirit of insanity. That it covers over the truth. <clears throat> so that's our service. To transform the foolishness of this world. And take control of ourselves. The yikvalo eating the Torah and set times for learning Torah. But as then he ne v'shachanti b'tochem, then God will dwell inside of you. I heard once from a very wise man that he said the time is will. What you want, all of a sudden you'll have time for. And if you don't, then you won't have time. There's a saying as they say: if you want something to get done, ask someone who's busy to do it, because people who aren't busy they don't have time. As soon as you make up your mind that you're going to set times for learning Torah <clears throat> and you make it realistic, I'm going to learn every day 15 minutes. Make up Chavrusa, make a partner, learn Torah, important, essential. It's the reason you're here in the world. That's something eternal. And it also has an eternal positive effect on the whole world. If you do what God says, <clears throat> It's not saying that you have to leave your business, leave your family, leave your, right? Don't get dressed, be like, you know, go to a nudist colony so that you fix up the sin of Adam. He doesn't put on garments. That's ridiculous. The garments that we have are good. It shows that we have a little bit of shame. That the world is not right. 
as soon as we fix the world up to be right and we do what God says on the outside, <clears throat> then we'll have nothing to be ashamed of. <clears throat> but as it is now, what, you, what, what, what are we ashamed of? That our body has become so dominant in ourselves. And if we take away our shame, then even that's gone. At least we have shame that connects us to God a little bit. <clears throat> we have to now set times for Torah. And then, Meshachanti, God says, I will dwell in them. Sheya'ir, that will shine, Giloy, or Eloki, revealed light of God and his soul. And what does this do? It gives us power. It gives us, how do you say, enthusiasm to serve God. The problems in the world won't go away. But our ability to deal with them and to transform them, that goes away. That increases our ability to transform the world and to do the job that we're put into the world for. <clears throat> that increases. We don't have to deal with ourselves so much, with our own doubts and our own laziness and, 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 and fears and lusts and things. <clears throat> That's what it means when we control our feeling of selfishness by means of us transforming this foolishness of the animal soul and the heat and the enthusiasm we have in the world. When we transform that to Kedusha, to doing what God wants and saying what God wants and to feeling what God wants and to thinking as much as possible what God wants, doing Torah, doing the commandments. <clears throat> having a pleasant personality, helping others. We trans How do we help others? By thinking God is creating everybody. I mean, he can give from his energy. I can give a little bit of energy from me. Not only that, my energy is not mine. It's God's energy. When we transform it, that's what holiness is. <clears throat> like I said, people would go to the Holy Temple three times a year. They would come away being happy. More than the simple. As then is talik yikor the goodish brukh within, there will be sp spread out the glory of God in all the worlds. What does it mean? Shemayir of miskala sovim kolomim that will shine this light of God, which is called that surrounds all the worlds. We what in other words, it's the source of all the worlds, all creation, all creation benefits. <clears throat> so it's almost like an injection. You know, a person is sick, and they give him one little injection, all of a sudden he gets better. It's just one little part of his body. It has nothing to do with, with the rest of his body. One little thing, and all of a sudden it heals him. The same thing. <clears throat> we can be the source of health for the whole entire world by just doing one good deed. Maimonides says <clears throat> that every person has to look at the world like it's on a, a scale that's <clears throat> equal, good or bad. If you do one good thing, it can tilt the whole entire world to the side of good. So we explained that the shtus of Kedusha is above normal, <clears throat> just like the removing of the feelings of intellect and emotions on the prophet's head. And that's what the holy temple, the tabernacle, was made from atze shitim, from shitim wood. Why this is transforming the shtut, shitim, the foolishness of this world to shtus, to, to foolishness of holiness, to be above normal. And so it is in the service of each and every one of us. <clears throat> Good. Now we'll learn the, let's see, somebody has anything. Oh, let me turn this off one minute and I'll answer your questions. And